Oh look, what do we have here? A new multi-effects pedal from Sonic Cake Audio. What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor, and we're gonna take a look at this multi-effects pedal from Sonic Cake Audio today. So in full disclosure, Sonic Cake Audio did reach out to me and see if I would make a review for this thing for you guys, but also in full disclosure, I think I said yes, and then I completely forgot about it until this thing showed up in my mailbox. I don't think I really looked at it too much. I just heard multi-effects pedal and I was like, oh yeah, they'd probably be interested in that. Especially if it's from Sonic Cake, it's it's probably a budget multi-effects pedal. It's probably pretty inexpensive here. So let's just open it and see what it looks like first. And then we can kind of go from there, all right? Pew. Oh, look at this little thing. You know, this really reminds me a lot of like the Valatin GP100, I think, something like that, that I reviewed on my channel quite a while ago, like years ago now at this point. All right, so this is called the Matrix Box. It is a tiny, tiny little multi-effects unit. So this is completely plastic. It feels like that high impact plastic. The little wah pedal thing is plastic also. It feels okay for what it is. I would imagine this is probably pretty inexpensive though. On the back, we have a guitar input. We have left and right quarter inch outputs. We have an eighth inch auxiliary input and eighth inch headphone outputs. We also have a USB-C port and nine volt 500 milliamp power. So you can put this on your pedal board and it will be powered by your normal pedal power accessories. You know what I'm trying to say. So the Matrix Box is $129.99. This would definitely fall in the budget range of multi-effects units. And it's kind of built like you would expect for a budget range multi-effects unit, but that doesn't matter. What does it sound like? Let's find out. All right, guys, I am plugged into the Sonic Cake Matrix Box. I am using a Jackson Warrior with EMGs in it. I'm plugged directly in. Now, I know this gets confusing to people, which confuses me, but this is not powering this cabinet. This cabinet is just here so that I can reach the pedal and demo it thought of being on the ground. Because a whole video of me hunched over like this is not something you wanna see. I don't wanna see it, I don't wanna do it, so this is for everybody. This is the first sound you get when you plug it in. Kind of dark, interesting sound. I'm sure no one cares about the sound that you get when you plug it in. Let's just build a patch from scratch and see what is actually going on under the hood of this guy. Okay, so on effects block one here, we have, this is really hard to see from the side. The contrast on this screen, it's not great. So there's a cry baby wah. I'm not using the wah pedal. Effects two is, I think it says screamer with a K. And we have it set up to boost mode. It's like they knew who they were sending this to. I haven't even picked the amp yet, but I already know I'm gonna boost it. So uh, yeah. <laughs> button here and see if we can change the settings. We have our input and our output settings with input level. Uh, no cab left, no cab right. That's pretty cool. So even though this thing is really small and inexpensive, you could still run a cabinet out of one side and uh, no cabinet on the other side. If you're gonna run this into a power amp and an actual cabinet, that's a nice feature. We have monitor level record. This is USB audio. I'm not using the USB audio. I'm just plugged directly into my audio interface from the quarter inch out. Tap tempo mode. I don't give a shit about that expression. Factory reset. They do have a desktop editor. Let's go through the different drives that they have here. So we have Screamer, Butter Overdrive, Super Overdrive, Blues Overdrive, Distortion Plus. We're gonna put this, oh, we, and then we have just a normal boost too. We're gonna go into the amps. So we have a Kali Dual, that's what we're on right now. Dark Double. There's no way I'm gonna be able to scroll through this and look at what they are. So I'm just gonna put a list on the screen right now so that you can see the amps that are included because uh, we're gonna be here forever with me just trying to look at this. I'm gonna go with the Bogner Ecstasy Red. <laughs> For a tiny plastic little box that's pretty inexpensive, I didn't have very high expectations, if I'm being real here. But uh, this actually sounds really good. You know, it kind of makes sense too. It's like, as the technology gets better, not only do we see these huge leaps in the front runners in this sort of amp modeling space. But uh, you know, it pulls the whole thing up, right? So even the smaller, more inexpensive units like this one um, actually sound pretty incredible for what it is. Let's dial in a cabinet. So right now we're using a Soldano 4x12. Uh, this is a Cali 4x12, so probably, you know, a Mesa Boogie. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, of course, you could load up your own IR and you know what your own IR sounds like. So I just want to show the ones that are included in the unit here. Dual 4x12. Is this another Mesa? <laughs> That one's a little bit better, but so far the Soldano is winning though. Wham! 4x12. I don't know what that is. Tangerine 4x12. It says Tanger because I don't have enough letters. But Tanger 4x12 is an orange. I don't know what happened to the low end, man. It's like we lost all the low end with these cabinets. Watt? 4x12? Like a high watt, maybe? That one sounds pretty good. Okay, now we're getting into 2x12s, base cabs, user IR, what? GA. No idea what that is, but that's a weird thing. Uh, these are probably like acoustic simulations. Jumbo. Which sound horrible with amplifiers through them. Should really be its own thing, but that's okay. Halen 4x12. That's a new one. It's an EVH cabinet, maybe? That one sounds pretty good. That's not bad. Ooh, this Bogner 4x12 sounds nice. I like the Bogner 4x12 a lot, but I think, dude, this uh, Soldano just had like a different low end. I like the Soldano cabinet, man. I don't know what to say. It's just this sounds the best out of all of them to me. Now let's go back and check out some of the other amplifiers here. We are on the Bogner Ecstasy red right now. Ingle 120. That one sounds really good. It's just very dark. Yeah, everything is set to 50 by default. Like these things aren't tuned so that when you switch to the amp that it's in a, you know, good spot. So. You gotta be careful with the treble controls. They're very sensitive. But man, that sounds good. Pretty brutal, dude. So we have these different effects blocks and the effects are just kind of all categorized together aside from like the delay and the reverb and the modulation. So you have it's like delay, reverb, modulation, and then everything else into two different effects blocks. So let's go in here. We even have some modulations in here. It's very weird how this thing, like there's a tape mod, like a tape machine, I guess. <laughs> This actually is sounding pretty good. This is not what I'm looking for, but it's interesting. So our boosts, bass distortion, octaver. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Yeah, so I get asked about pitch shifting all the time with these things. This actually has a pitch shifter built in and it sounds decent and it doesn't have like unusable latency. It's a pretty big win for this. We're gonna try to actually transpose my guitar with this because we do have a legit pitch shifter in here, so. So we're down six steps right now from C standard. And there's quite a bit of latency there. 
Kind of amazing you can do it though. I mean, it's not the most horrible thing ever. You could probably get away with using this. Sound-wise, it sounds pretty good. Um, it's just that latency, you know, the delay. But, uh, you know, for $130, again, I'm surprised it even has any pitch effects in there. Let's go, let's turn this off. I like this mag delay. I don't know what... It's very nice trails, man. It sounds really good. Okay, let's go to the reverb here. We have we have room, hall, church, plate, spring, sky. Let's hear the sky reverb. That sounds really good. <laughs> I mean, there are reverb pedals that do this one thing that costs more than this. I'm just saying, if you're looking for best bang for your buck, this might be it. Okay, so the C reverb has a little bit of a different sort of trail on it, like a detune thing going on. This guy just sounds really nice and clean. Mod reverb. Similar to the sky. Okay, and that's it. Uh, not that you need more than that. I think it sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty good, man. Okay, I'm gonna do this because I know someone's gonna ask. Uh, let's actually go in and change the amp up here to a clean amp. I know, calm down, it'll be okay. Dark double, so this is probably a uh, twin reverb. <laughs> I think for what you're getting, it's a pretty good value so far. Uh, now, there's a couple things that I will try before we wrap this up. Let's put the amp back on that angle. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Okay, let's, uh, let's try the drum machine here. And there we go. You just press drum and it starts drumming. Fills and everything. Okay, this is kind of ridiculous. All right, we got some stuff in here. This is metal one. I guess, I, I don't know. There we go, that's a metal beat. Let's increase the BPM. Okay, these are all the options we have. We can't change the drum set or anything. You know, the point of the drum machines in these units is just to have something to practice to that will keep you on time. It's not really meant to, you know, go on any recordings or anything like that or meant to sound really good. You can't change the drum sounds or anything. You can choose between a bunch of different styles, some of which are kind of questionable, but uh, it's got one included. And again, for $130, man, um, yeah, this thing's not a bad deal. And we still have the looper and we have the, you know, the pedal, you know, it's there, it has one. Okay, and then we have mode preset. We also have a stomp mode uh, if we wanted to assign our blocks to these pedals. That's really cool. That's actually a cool feature also. <laughs> So you can hear there I have my boost uh, attached to this first one. All right, I think in the range of $130 pedals, you could do much, much worse than this. Now, is this something I would use? No, but it's not aimed towards me. This is aimed towards like beginners and people who want very budget-friendly options. And for those people, I would say that your money goes very, very far with something like this. There are other small multi-effects units like this. I've reviewed a bunch of them on my channel, and I gotta say, like in that $130 range, you know, they're pretty limited on what they do. But this one actually has a really decent amount of effects, and 
Most of the stuff sounds really good. You might want to steer clear of some of those 4x12s, but you can load up your own IRs if you want. And if you need an IR, you can get one for free by joining my Discord. Links in the description below. So I think you could be set with this thing. All right, shout out to Sonic Cake Audio for sponsoring this video, but more importantly, shout out to you for being here with me. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, consider subscribing on your way out, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.